Hi Marvelous Designers! In this tutorial, we will be making a vintage nurse uniform. First of all, load a female avatar. Here, we will make an outfit for Fifi. Then, change the library window to modular configurator window in the submenu. Double-click to open the women's folder and then open the shirts subfolder. Double-click on the short sleeve shirt icon, and then you will see the blocks below it. Double-click the blocks to load them into the scene. In the modular configurator, you can use block assets to build various garments. If you want to change the block to another type, just double-click it and the block will be replaced. Select the blocks as shown. Change the window back to the library window. Since the blocks are made with the attention pose, we need to change the avatar's pose to fit them. Deactivate the garments, and then we can load in the pose. Load the attention pose file with the default settings. Since we've deactivated the garments, we can change the pose. The garment will not be simulated as the change occurs. After the pose is changed, we can activate the shirt. Activate simulation to drape the shirt on the avatar. To edit the garments more easily, we can apply linked editing to the patterns. Before that, we need to delete the block template. One way is to select the block frame and then click Delete to delete it. Then, select all the patterns and select Remove Linked Editing in the right-click pop-up menu. Use the Internal Polygon Line tool to create the middle line of the back patterns to cut them. Create the lines based on the segment points. Select Cut and Sew in the right-click pop-up menu. After that, select all the body patterns and then select Symmetric Pattern with Sewing in the Apply Linked Editing section. When you check the sewing lines, you can now see the sewing lines are symmetrical. Then merge the back yoke to the back body pattern using the Edit Sewing tool. Delete the segment point in the back middle line to make it become a straight segment line. Select a back pattern, then rotate it by selecting the back middle line to be parallel to the Y axis. Now we are going to add darts to the pattern to make the garment fit the body shape. Select the dart tool. Click a point which is horizontal to the waist point. Click once to input the specific measurements of the dart. Change both the left and right width to 10 millimeters. Preview the position. Make sure it's not past the inner shoulder point. Then click OK to apply. The dart is a diamond-shaped hole, and there will be automatically sewing lines between the segment lines. Simulate. Now you can see the shirt is closer fitting to the body. Change to the back view. Do the same steps with the back pattern. Check the fitting. You can see the space between the shirt and the back can be decreased a little bit more. Use the transform pattern tool, select the whole dart shape, drag the marquee box to scale its width. The center dart might change, so we need to use the pivot point function. Double click the center point of the marquee box, then the pivot point is activated. 
When you scale the shape, it will adjust based on the pivot point. Check the fit, then we will move on to making the shirt longer. Use the Edit Pattern tool to select the hemlines of the shirt and then hold down on the Shift key as you drag them to move them vertically. When dragging the hemlines, right-click to input an exact distance to move them. Simulate, then you will see that it's a little bit tight along the hip. Move the side seam point to make the pattern wider. When you move the point, hold down on the Shift key to use a reference line and right-click to input a specific number. Move both the points horizontally by 40 millimeters. Simulate to apply the change. Now the fit is better, we are going to adjust the darts to make them smoother. We can see the shape from the dart is severe. We will move the lower dart point a little closer to the hip line so that the dart slope is smoother. Do the same with the back patterns. These will be lower than the front. Now we're going to create a princess seam cut line. Use internal polygon line tool to create the cut line from the dart point to the shoulder pattern outline. Then click on the back pattern to make a reference of that start point. Start the shoulder internal line from that reference, make sure it hits the outlines and the dart points. Finish up the internal lines. Use the Edit Pattern tool to cut and sew along the internal lines. After simulation, you will find out that the dart shapes could be smoother. Let's play with the dart points and make them smoother. We can do this by moving the points around a bit. Do the same steps with all of the dart points. When the garment fits as desired, use the Smooth Curve tool to make the corners even smoother. Click and drag the segment point to create the smooth curve. Do the same with the bottom parts. Now if it's still a little bit rough around the dart, we can use the seam tool to adjust it even further. Set the shrinkage as negative 1% to shrink the pattern slightly. Click around the dart point, then simulate to see the effect. Rotate your view and check if there's anywhere else that needs to be adjusted. Set the size of the steam brush to a small size to apply the shrinkage in a small spot. Do the same steps for the back darts. Reduce the skin offset of the avatar. Simulate to apply the change. With it lengthened, the front placket is not flat. Let's adjust that sewing line. Use the Edit Sewing Line tool to adjust the sewing line to the end of the segment. After simulation, you can see that the front placket is flatter now. Changing to the Edit Pattern tool, we are going to adjust the sleeve pattern next. Delete the segment point to make the opening straight. Dragging the hemline to lower, we can see the sides are curved. To maintain the slope, we need to delete the curve points.
make the sleeve longer. Now the sleeve is a bit too wide, we are going to fix that. Using the slash and spread tool to reduce the width and maintain the armhole curve. Click the sleeve top point to start creating a slash line. Hold down on the shift key to create a vertical slash line. After the slash line is created, click on the slash line to rotate both sides. Check the preview effect. Make sure the pattern will be narrower, then click. Now you can see the sleeve cap curvature is maintained. Simulate, then you will see the sleeve opening is narrower. Next we are going to make that puff sleeve effect. Still using the slash and spread tool, but this time we will start the slash from the bottom of the sleeve. Click the slash line to rotate the two sides to make the sleeve cap wider. Simulate and we can see we need to fix the sewing lines. We need to gather the folds in the middle of the sleeve top. Use Edit Sewing Tool to select the sewing lines and press Delete key to delete them. Use the Free Sewing Tool to create a pair of 1 to 1 sewing lines along the bottom of the armhole. Click on the 3D window to have an idea of where you would like to have the folds. Then create the first pair of sewing lines on the reference point. Make sure to have both halves the same length. Do the same with the back patterns. Then we will create a one to end sewing line by holding shift with the free sewing tool between the top and the armhole lines. Lower the particle distance to have a more detailed effect. Convert the segment points into curve points, then create a new sleeve top point using the X hotkey and clicking once. If you need to have an obvious puff effect, you can move the sleeve cap even higher. Simulate and check the effect. We could repeat the slash and spread tool to add even more volume. You don't have to do this, but I will. Since we've used the slash and spread tool again, we need to adjust the sewing lines again. First, adjust the sewing line along the flattened part with the same length. Then adjust the gathered sewing line to touch the ends to match. Do the same with the back patterns. Simulate, then you will see the puff effect is getting more obvious now. Again, we are going to straighten the sleeve opening. Deleting the segment point, makes it lay uneven now that the sleeve is longer. The middle of the sleeve hits lower, so we have to keep the curve shape. We need to adjust the corners of the pattern to be a right angle to make the hemline linked smoothly. Using the Edit Curvature tool, drag the hemline to edit it into a smooth curve. Now you can see the opening looks good in the 3D window. Then let's roll up the sleeve. Use the Edit Pattern tool, select the hemline of the sleeve, then use Offset as internal line to create a fold line. Input 20 millimeters as the distance, then click OK. Select the Fold Arrangement tool, select that internal line, then use the gizmo to fold the pattern. Strengthen the pattern to assist the fold if necessary. When it's folded, 
unstrengthen the patterns. Now we are going to add the apron. To avoid the collision after the apron is loaded, we need to make the dress tight for a while. Select all of the body patterns and adjust the shrinkage weft to 60%, then simulate. Now the patterns have shrunk in the weft direction, which makes it a tight dress. Adjust the additional thickness collision to make the garment fit closer to the body. Then add the Nurse Outfit Z-Pack file found in the description box of this video to the workspace. Select Add as the load type. Move the 2D patterns to not be overlapping with others. Freeze the dress to fix it and simulate. When it's stable, we can adjust the apron's length. Use the Edit Pattern tool to move the hemline as desired. Then activate the dress and simulate them together. Change the shrinkage weft back to 100%, then simulate again. If it's unstable, stair-step your shrinkage change to 80% first, then 90%, and then 100%. Now we're going to add the nurse hat. Add the attached nurse hat Z-Pack file to the workspace, found in the description box. Use the Fold Arrangement tool to fold the hat. Then move it to the head. When it's close to the avatar's head, press the W key and click to add a pin onto the pattern. Then strengthen the pattern to make it fold better. Activate simulation. Now the pattern is falling to the head, we are going to use the pin to fold the back. Hold down on the W key, then click on the pattern to add a pin to it. Then move the pin to fold the back. Make sure that one end is overlapping the other end, flat. Hold down on the W key, then click on the pin to delete them. Then create sewing lines between the internal lines. Look at the 3D window, make sure the sewing line direction is matching. Add a pin to the pattern to fix the corner. Simulate and then move the pin close to the avatar. Then lower the particle distance and additional thickness collision. and use the Fold Arrangement tool to fold the pattern. Drag the pattern to make the folded part stretch enough. Change to the Select Move tool, then delete the pin. Turn around to the back and add a pin to the back of the pattern. Then select Attach Pin to Avatar. Then, when you simulate, the hat is fixed to the avatar's head. Now the hat should not fall from the head. Do the same to the nurse hat sides. When you attach the pin to the avatar, it will automatically attach to the closest avatar mesh. This will help us to make the hat fit the avatar. Drag the pattern a bit to adjust the balance. Then unstrengthen the pattern. Check the fabric physical properties of the hat. You will see the bending value is high so that it looks hard and can maintain the shape.
Let's go adjust the physical properties of the dress. Unfreeze the pattern. Change back to Thick Textured Surface View. Select all the dress patterns, then assign a new fabric to them. Then go to Physical Property to select a preset fabric. Here I select Cotton Twill. This is for work clothes like a shirt. Simulate and you will see the folds are more obvious since this fabric is less stretchy now. Apply seam tape to the armhole so that it should not be stretched and the folds will look much more obvious. Then let's unfreeze the apron and simulate the garments together. You can merge the patterns together if you want. Then you can lower the particle distance and additional thickness collision. After it's simulated, delete the fold lines and simulate again. You can lower the particle distance of the dress to 5 to have a smoother effect. Then delete the fold line on the sleeves to have a natural folded effect. And that is the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and let us know if you have any questions.